hi, I'm Ari, and I'm a bartender and a software engineer. Uh, I'm often pinged by friends on what bourbon to buy uh, their friend or their colleague uh, for a wedding, a birthday party, and so forth. Uh, as you might imagine, that's a tall order because usually I don't know any of these people. Uh, so how do you tell? Um, so let me share my approach first things first. Um, I also asked some localized uh, spirit stores. So, you know, people sell bourbon and wine, etc., and they get asked these questions every day. And I don't want to just give you my personal opinion. I want to also sanity check it with other people that just get asked this stuff all the time. Now, I should point out that bourbon is the big thing they ask about. Um, but in the United States, you're not limited to just bourbon. Uh, people realize I drink bourbon a lot, uh, but you know, it's not just bourbon. Um, there's a lot of American whiskey out there, uh, and I urge you to consider that as well uh, when you're shopping for friends. Not everybody is going to like bourbon. It's got a sweeter corn profile. Um, they might like rye, they may be more of a wine person, etc. But the, the key is that you should try to understand who you're buying for. Um, and I'll go over a bunch of questions that I ask. Uh, but I just wanted to point out that bourbon only shouldn't limit you from a gift perspective. So here's a few questions to ask. Um, and you can see where it might lead. Uh, number one, are they new to bourbon and or whiskey? Um, if, if they already drink bourbon or whiskey, uh, that sets the stage for which proof they might like. Um, if they're new, I ask, uh, what do they already drink? And whether you know they like lower or higher proof, because you don't want to go and grab something that's lower proof when that's not what they tend to steer towards. But if they're relatively new to bourbon or just spirits in general, like I like a vodka tonic, um, or vodka soda, gin and tonic, uh, a high proof bourbon, even if it's really good, could be a turnoff. And then now you've got a bottle they don't drink and they always offer to you every time you're over. <laughs> now, if they like beer, um, I would find out, okay, what kind of beer? You know, are you drinking Michelob Ultra? Uh, are you drinking a craft beer? Do you like stouts? Do you like Kentucky bourbon barrel? Um, those will help me fine tune things. Uh, you shouldn't limit yourself to only buying a bottle of uh, bourbon or whiskey, etc. Sometimes you can combine it with a gift. So if they like uh, stoutier or craft beers, um, I try to recommend things that are along those lines. You you can get a bourbon that's finished and you know like one of them here is uh like the 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 bard i don't know there we go um this is the founders um kentucky bourbon barrel finished uh bourbon um they, they finished the the bardstown uh bourbon in those stout barrels so it's kind of the opposite of what kbb is uh, but it's a phenomenal flavor profile this is around 150 dollars a bottle but you know, it's, it's absolutely delicious and, and one day it'll be gone. So I actually have a couple stashed away in the back. Um, and it's a beautiful bottle. So it's a, it's a good gift, not only because of what's inside, but what it looks like outside. Um, you could also, uh, if they're into something like lighter beers, uh, I would probably go with a weeded bourbon. Um, uh, Ideally, even though you could buy, you know, like a Larceny, you know, um, you know Larceny is really good. Uh, so, hmm, Larceny. Uh, the, th the thing, though, is I would actually go and see if you can find a store pick of Larceny. Uh, they're not hard to find. And the store picks, I just tend to find, are better. You know, you'll also find them being single barrel. I'll cover something like that. In a future video but you know in this case uh, I'm part of a bourbon club this is the Naptown bourbon club but this is the 2021 pick um, you could pair this which was like a $40 bottle you know maybe 50 um, and give them a really nice rocks glass to go with it so if they like to drink um, bourbon on the rocks well that's fine 
Um, get them a really nice like Glen Cairn bourbon glass. You know, this these are great. These are like I think I think it was like forty dollars for the set. Um, I got two. Glen Cairn makes those really cool uh, bourbon glasses that you hear about all the time. Let me see if I can grab that. It's behind the bar here. Oh, I'll see if I can grab it. So if you know these right here, uh, these are Glen Cairn glasses. You can see it printed on the on the bottom. Um, this is their rocks glass, and this is a great gift. It's got heft. It's very simple but crafted beautifully and um it, that so just think you don't have to um only get the bottle you can also get something for them to drink it with and that's that's a great um option for them now if they drink wine i'll usually recommend some sort of finished bourbon um finished bourbons are not uncommon like i was just saying before with the kentucky bourbon stout uh, but wine finishes are incredibly common. They, they give a sweeter profile. And, you know, for people, they're good for a, a bourbon drinker, a whiskey drinker, and a non-bourbon bourbon whiskey, put it up, I can say this, bourbon whiskey drinker alike. Um, and they're just, check it out when you go to the store, especially store picks, um, because someone's gone through and made sure it doesn't taste too whiny, usually, usually, it depends. Um, so, with uh, some options that you've got, uh, I'm, I'm from Indiana, so we have ready access to Hugh Hamer, uh, which is Old Hamer's Finishes. You know, this is uh, from Vine and Table. Um, you can kind of see these, it's around 103 proof. And this is absolutely delicious. This is finished in port wine barrels. So, wow, you know, just ports are so nice because it's sweet, but uh, usually not syrupy uh, when when it's a good finish and the the Hugh Hamer folks these are the um, the people that do Old Hamer uh, West Fork whiskey wow yeah the, these finishes every one I've had has been great um, Bardstown who I mentioned before has a bunch of finishes you know just collaborations rum etc uh, but definitely check them out like they're they're what Pfeiffer Favit I'm I'm not sure I'm saying it right. Um, there's uh, Thomas S. Moore, which is getting easier to find now. This one's actually a Cabernet Sauvignon cask. So, you know, delicious. A friend of mine asks me anytime I see this in the store, I should buy him a bottle of it. This, there generally is not a store pick of it, but that's okay. It's, it's good on its own. Store pick doesn't mean better. Uh, I just tend to gravitate towards them. But that's because I, I trust the pickers at the stores. Um, depending on where you're from, you know, some of these may or may not be available. Uh, but if you have problems with that, let me know. I can try helping you find stuff. Just hit me up in the comments uh, or just ping me on social media. Here's uh, from Three Chord. This is finished in Pinot Noir barrels. So the, and this is really good. Um, but, Anyway, my, my favorite probably, probably, is the, the, the Hugh Hamer. I mean, it just, it, they just, they get finishing right uh, when, it, when it comes to the, the wine barrels. Uh, and don't forget, like I said, a glass. If you get them a glass with this, you know, you know, most of these bottles are under $60. So if you get a nice glass, they can be like, oh, wow, look, you know, so-and-so got me this really great bottle of bourbon or what have you, and then, oh, a nice glass to drink it with. Mm. Now, what if they like wine and bourbon? Um, well, this is where I think you can start mixing it up a little bit. Uh, they're already familiar with the, the notes of both. So I think you can get a little bit more eclectic. Um, they're already kind of used to a higher proof spirit, you know, like a bourbon or a whiskey. Um, but then, you know, lower proof or sweeter, like a wine. So you can balance that out and try finding some things that, you know, might expand their palate a bit. Um, this is where I would recommend, gosh, one of my favorite bourbon, or not, sorry, not bourbons, uh, whiskeys. Uh, it's from Barrel. Barrel is just one of the kings of blending. 
uh, wow you know definitely check out their their dovetail this is this is wonderful I mean I'm sure you can see it um, you know whiskey finished in rum port and Dunn vineyards Cabernet barrels uh, another very popular version of their product is barrel seagrass uh, it's it's wonderful uh, you should check it out I think my, my cat agrees uh, she can hear her in the background because I didn't close the door um, you can also check out any number of their other things you know, like barrel armida you know wonderful stuff and then of course you could get them uh, you know some interesting uh, whiskeys you could check out places like uh, Flaviar or you could go you know where where they have special um, releases or hit your local spirit store, which might have some very interesting whiskey releases. Um, I already covered wine finished, but yeah, you know, I got this one Kikoman. You know, this is a, you know, it's an Isla single malt Scotch. You know, but it's a uh, bourbon influenced. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. Um, it's not super peaty. Uh, it's really nice. Um, but if you already know what your friend likes, this will actually help you. In, in figuring that out. Now, um, what if they don't drink bourbon, but they like whiskey or scotch? Um, I am starting to really uh, go into that, go in that direction and learn a lot more about it. Um, that's not a bad thing. I, I think it's great. Uh, you can, there's so many good scotches and whiskeys out there. Uh, Scotch whiskey, right? Same thing. But I think you could start breaking out, you know, so if they mostly drink an Irish whiskey, you know, um, a Scotch, uh, help them expand because there's so many options out there. You know, for example, Amrut, an Indian whiskey. And did you know that I didn't, I didn't realize this until a few weeks ago. Uh, we'll see how this video ages. Um, India consumes more whiskey than like the next three countries, you know, combined, yeah, or the next three um, countries on that list combined. It's crazy, and they have more award-winning whiskeys than any other country. But oddly enough, the Indian whiskeys are hard to get in India. <laughs> um, so definitely check out uh, whiskeys from other areas. So try uh, an American whiskey. Yeah. Uh, try uh, the Indian whiskey I was just talking about, like Amrut. Um, try you know English whiskey, you know from you know the UK. Yeah, there's there's so many places that make whiskey that all have unique flavor profiles. Uh, try finding it from a non-traditional country, uh, at least what you might consider non-traditional. Yeah, unless you already knew about India. So um, definitely, I would check out if you can. Try that Amrut. That was wow. I was I was absolutely fascinated uh, by it, and it was it was delicious. So help your friend that way, and hopefully they'll thank you for it. So if you're not sure um, what your friend likes, or they're not sure what their friend likes, when you're talking with someone else who came to you because they figured you knew, um, there, there's a couple staples I'll tend to go to. Now keep in mind I live in the Midwest. So I have access to a new riff. Mm, new riff. New riff is phenomenal. I love it. Uh, almost everything they have is four years. But wow, this they're just absolutely great, and you can find a single barrel anywhere. Um, now another go-to uh, Four Roses. Definitely check them out. Um, if you look at their label. This one, well, this this is a, a, a store pick, so I'm not going to get into that. Those are like unobtainium. They're very hard to find. Um, but what I'm about to explain to you doesn't affect anything. You can buy the Four Roses single barrel um, at almost any store. It's the store picks that are hard to find. So if you read the label, though, there's entire articles about this. The last two tell you how deep in the rickhouse and how high in the rickhouse. So keep that in mind. Um, I find that, like in this case, where I'm not sure how the video will render it, uh, it says 3E. It's on the third floor of the rickhouse and five back. Now, 
uh, I tend to find that the higher levels are sweeter and the lower levels are spicier. And this is proven out time and again when I've done taste tests with friends. So um, if you know they, they like something spicier, go with something that says one, two, or three, um, and then four or five, and if you're lucky, six, um, sweeter as you go up. My favorite floor uh, so far is number four, uh, and that's because I can't find a six. I've seen them a couple times, and for whatever reason, uh, I don't pick them up. Uh, but hey, you know, life goes on. Um, I'll, I'll find another one someday, but definitely a good idea. Um, yeah, there's, you know, you, you can't go wrong there. Now, if you can find it, um, and they have much better distribution these days, uh, you're trying to find something that they'll enjoy uh, that's uh, not super common, but is also not hard to find, definitely check out Wilderness Trail. They are absolutely phenomenal. Um, if you can get their six-year variant, ooh, nice. Um, but, you know, this way you're not getting like a run-of-the-mill, you know, like, oh, I got, you know, oh, yeah, he already has Maker's Mark on his shelf. Um, so, yeah, Four Roses, single barrel, um, always a good pick. It's a beautiful bottle. Uh, delicious juice in there. Don't get mad at me for using the word juice. And um, you just can't go wrong. Four Roses just make some amazing stuff. Uh, and the price point is good. And again, don't forget the glass. You know, if you could get them a glass with it, you know, I, I know I would have enjoyed that with every <laughs> every uh, uh, gift of bourbon or whiskey, what have you, uh, that people have given me. So what if they're already a bourbon drinker? Yeah. Um, then that, that makes things a little easier, at least from my end, because there's, there's just a list that I can go through. Um, I, I wrote one up. I'm going to go through it with you. Um, and I will post this list in the video uh, just so you can maybe print it out and bring it with you to the store. Um, so I tend to recommend that you go non-allocated. I think people like to go and get, oh, well, I'll get them a Blanton's or I'll get them, you know, uh, I'm going to go find a Weller foolproof or an E.H. Taylor, you know, what have you. And you end up paying a lot of money on secondary because that's the easiest way to find it. Um, now that, that depends. I mean, like if you live near Ohio or in Ohio, you can use the Ohio State Liquor Board um, and it will actually tell you where some of these bottles are. Um, I think you can do that in Virginia. I'd have to check. I never tried it, but they have all the ABC stores and they greatly control uh, how liquor is allocated. I think just recently um, I read about there was a guy who got fired and or arrested because he was holding back allocated bottles to give to, uh, or I think he was selling them. That's, if, you know, giving them to good customers is one thing. Selling them, AKA flipping them is another. Um, so yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad he got in trouble. I'm, I'm not a big fan of flipping. I think people should enjoy, um, you know, these, these harder to find items. Uh, but when people hoard them to, and then flip them, uh, it keeps prices high and, you know, the people who I think should, you know, that want to enjoy it, don't get a chance to enjoy it unless they pay ultra premium, you know, like, like, you know, double, triple, you know, quadruple, even more. Uh, wow. Um, anyway, let me continue. Uh, so number one, you can't go wrong with any store pick generally, uh, like a local store. Go check out a store pick. Um, I was, when I was talking with Vine and Table and I was talking with the story company folks, um, you know, they, they were pointing out that, yeah, you may be able to find a Larceny or a Wilderness Trail um, or a, a Hugh Hamer or a Buffalo Trace or an Old Forester uh, anywhere. But that unique pick of theirs is actually a great gift you know, because it's the store pick. Uh, it's... Um, in many cases, uh, well curated. Um, they went through the whole process of trying, uh, you know, like four, five, six, maybe even more samples, choosing the best one. Um, and I've been on a barrel pick before, and I can tell you, it makes a huge difference when done right. Uh, there's some stores. 
that will just simply call the distillery and say, just send me a barrel and they won't go through it. And they'll just label it single barrel and who knows what you're going to get. Um, but if the smaller stores, you know, um, generally not chains, uh, have someone that you could probably trust. You know, I would suggest that if you're already a whiskey drinker or bourbon drinker, um, you go try one of their picks and see if it's along the lines of what you like. Uh, and if it is, um, then great. That will help you make a good decision on finding a good store pick. Uh, but yeah, definitely don't rule out store picks. They, they're, they're probably the first place I would go. You know, and the store picks usually are not super expensive. Um, and there's usually a lot of them. Um, so I'll, I'll see if I can get some photos. I think I took some photos and I'll overlay them in this video <laughs> and, uh, and show you. Um, so anyway, like I said, any store pick of Wilderness Trail, Knob Creek, Knob Creek's everywhere. You can even get it at Meyer, uh, and there, it's, Meyer store picks are actually pretty good. I, you know, so I, I think they go through the process. I've been happy with pretty much every one I've gotten from them. Um, Hugh Hamer, if you can get it uh, in the area, Larceny, which is weeded. Ooh, I love weeded bourbons. Uh, Buffalo Trace, which I'm sure everybody knows about. Old Forester, it's tried and true. Um, but yeah, definitely keep in mind those those local store picks. Wow. And before I get blown up in the comments, I noticed after uh, I recorded everything about this, I forgot to mention Maker's Mark. So yes, Maker's Mark, wow. Uh, store picks of Maker's Mark are <laughs> everywhere. Um, you can't, I just, it's delicious. If you can get a, you know, it, it depends, you know, what you like, but you can see on the back of every Maker's Mark, you know, the different stave profiles. You know, you get the cool traditional red wax dipped top. Um, but yeah, these are just like flavor bombs. I mean, I've, I've got things named, well, it was like, one's called like honey toast another one that's called like apple butter or something. Um, there's a bunch of different names. This one just simply says Crown Liquors 3.0. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, the Maker's Marks picks. Um, I I don't think I've ever been disappointed with a Maker's Mark pick. So, you know, if you see those on the shelf, you know, they're not expensive and you'll see a lot of them. Uh, that doesn't make it bad. These, there's a reason people keep coming back to these picks um, or keep coming back to Maker's Mark. And, you know, there you go. You know, you get the, the, the cool red wax. Now, others that you will uh, you should take a look at uh, that are in my list. Uh, Bardstown, they just have these great finishes. They've got their Discovery series. Um, I, I'm trying to find it here. Let's see if I can get it. I have so many different burdens here. Anyway, I can't find it. <laughs> I should have I should have brought that one out so I could find it for you. Um, Wilderness Trail six year. Wow, if you can get a bottle of that, mm, um, and I have one, but it's in the other room. Um, also, consider if you're already a bourbon drinker or a whiskey drinker, if it's something that you like, share that with them, you know? So uh, I think that, that you know, bourbon and, and the whiskey brings people together. You get some great experiences uh, having a dram with your friends and you know, uh, sharing is caring. So keep that in mind, you know, share what you like uh, and your friend may like it. Um, if not, go back to getting them a, a nice glass, you know, or Glencairn, you know, so that you can at least drink it together, uh, even if they only drink it when you come over. Um, let's see what else. Uh, if you can find it, bluegrass, wow, bluegrass makes this, uh, this weeded um, bourbon, um, and they use blue corn. Definitely check them out. Um, I really like them. Uh, one that I found recently that I've really enjoyed uh, is from New York. So like in my previous video, not all bourbon comes from Kentucky. Uh, Field and Sound, really good. You know, lots of bourbons that are at least bottled in bond. 
Um, if it's already bottled in bond, it's already four years old. Uh, so that's nice. It's not too young um, and it's not gonna, hopefully it won't be over oaked. But yeah, feel and sound was really good. If you can't tell, I'm a huge fan of, of weeded bourbons. And many people apparently are because that's what Pappy is. That's what Weller is. Uh, so some of the, the, the most sought after bourbons, weeded mash bills. Um, let's see. Uh, you know, so like I said, you don't have to go from the, the Kentucky region. Um, and uh, if, you're, if you're searching for bourbon, I would actually go and uh, take a look and see, like if you're in the Midwest, like I said, go take a look in Ohio. Um, and you know, speaking of which, try local bourbons too. So maybe your friend is from Nevada or from New York um, or, or hey, from Kentucky, right? Bring them something you can only get in your state. You know, for example, in, in my state, we've, we've got Old 55. We have a lot in our state. You know, we've got Hard Truth. We've got um, Spirits of French Lick. We've got Old 55. We've got Starlight. You know, there's, there's so many um, great bourbons in Indiana that you simply can't get uh, in a number of states where, you know, my friends are. So I will often find a very nice finished bourbon because those are, those are pretty cool um, and, and bring that as a gift. And then, you know, now that I've, I've finally found the, the Glencairn two pack of, of crystal glasses, I'll buy that for them as well. Um, cause that way them and their spouse or maybe a coworker, uh, can, can enjoy it. So the, the last thing I, I asked them is how much they want to spend. So I asked above, you know, like, what do you like to drink? And then what kind of, um, what do you already like to drink? Um, and fine tune based on their taste. So beer, wine, bourbon, scotch, you know. Um, and then you know, it, it does end up being, okay, how much do you want to spend? Because you can spend a lot of money or you can spend a little money. Uh, I think spending more than 150 bucks is silly um you know there's very few bottles of bourbon um that i've that i've spent more than a hundred something bucks on uh that i've gone wow this was worth every penny um yeah and i'm not talking about secondary like buying something allocated i'm just saying in general uh so i think even the 75 dollar mark is very good um bardstown i think is worth the money um you know it, as you get up there, you know, just, you know, the, the blending experience, you know, the, the bottle itself, the, just what the product is, yay, you know, really good. Um, but you don't have to spend that kind of money. What you can do is, you know, buy a nice single barrel pick and then, you know, like some rocks glasses or maybe even some additional items to go with it. Uh, so I think, you know, with, with a wedding, like a hundred, you know, a wedding, maybe 150 bucks, depends how close you are to them. Um, for a corporate gift, I'd say between 50 and $150. Um, yeah, I think no matter what, the gift will be appreciated. It's a gift, friends. You know, it's, it's a gift. You don't have to show off how much money you can spend. I, I think if you're, if you're smart about it, you're giving them something they'll enjoy and you're not spending a lot of money and you can actually spread it out. You know, so I, I keep getting back to that, that, the rocks glass, but you could buy them a Glencairn, you could buy them some Luxardo cherries, you know, you could buy some mixers, um, you could buy them ice molds, you know, to make the, the nice clear cubes. Um, you know, keep in mind, there's, there's more to just drinking a spirit neat, um, whether that's blasphemy or not, I, I, I don't know, it's up, that's up to you. Um, but keep that in mind, and I think you'll, you'll, you'll find they'll get more enjoyment out of the gift, even when the bottle is gone. So, are there definite picks? Um, you know, like, I find it hard to go to, because, you know, I've, I've been showing off all these bottles. I mean, there's, there's cool store picks, you know, like, um, this is from a store, uh, 
that story uh, story company, which is one of the places that I talked with, but Story Time Distilling, uh, they did a cool thing with Jepson's. No, this is not Malort. Um, you know, they did a Jepson's bourbon pick, and it, I mean, it was just comically funny. If you're you know if you're a child of the '80s, <laughs> you know it's this was very cool. Um, I love store picks. You know, I like I you can't go wrong. But what are like definite picks? Um, which I think is unfair, but I'm going to go through a list that I made. Um, if allocated is a thing for you, like you are dead set on allocated, fine. Uh, then go with Blanton's. Um, you can't go, generally you can't go wrong with Blanton's, but keep in mind it's a single barrel product. So the, it's not blended, meaning that the flavor profile of a Blanton's can vary based on which barrel it came out of. It's a huge difference. Uh, well, not always huge, but just keep that in mind. Not every Blanton's is the same. Um, Weller Antique 107, probably my favorite bourbon of all time. Um, if you're in Ohio, it's not as hard to get. It's, it's relatively easy to get the Weller Special Reserve. That's the green label. Um, but then of course there's the, uh, the red label, which is the Antique 107. Um, Weller Foolproof if you can get it, uh, good luck. Um, or E.H. Taylor anything. Um, easiest to get is probably E.H. Taylor Small Batch. Um, and if you can get the other variations, go for it. Um, Weller, by the way, uh, yeah, much easier to come by in Ohio and in Texas. And then I'm gonna go grab for a moment uh, a bottle of each of these. I'll, I'll show you what they look like. Oh my gosh, I have all these to bring out here. <laughs> the funny thing is, is like my Blantons, I, I drink the practically the least of. Um, so there's the E.H. Taylor, you know, it comes in this pretty bottle, you know, um, oh, and you know, it's, I mean, it's delicious juice. You can't go wrong with it. And it's, a uh, it's weeded. Um, Weller also weeded. This is the Antique 107, my favorite. Um, much easier to find is the Special Reserve, the green label. Uh, and then there's the blue label, which I have in the other room, but I just didn't want to fill up my hands and break everything. Um, tried and true, uh, right here, there's your Blantons. You know, uh, if you like all these, uh, the, the horses, you know, the, in their different positions, the riders, you can actually go to Buffalo Trace and buy every single one of these, and you can even buy a, uh, a stave to put um, put them in. So you don't have to go buy a bunch of bottles of Blantons to get all the the horses. You can just you can even buy them online. So if you want to do that as a very cool gift, you can absolutely do it. Just you know, go online. It'll cost you a lot less than buying even one bottle of Blantons. Allocated is out of the way. Um, yeah, there's also Eagle Rare. Okay, yep, yep, I'll show you, yeah. Eagle Rare, yay, Eagle Rare. Um, if you can, get a store pick of it. They'll usually have a silver sticker on them. Um, also, hard to get the store picks, but I mean, I think if you're gonna buy Eagle Rare, even though it's already delicious by itself, and it's only like, it's under $40. So if you're paying like 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars, or more for an Eagle Rare, you're probably paying secondary. So don't don't overpay for things. See if you uh, see if you can find a friend, you know, that already has a spare bottle of Eagle Rare that you can buy it from them um, and save yourself from getting uh, reamed. You know, it's just it's 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 sad uh, the state of the secondary market. Um, Anyway, uh, if, if they like high rye bourbon, get them the Wilderness Trail six year. You cannot go wrong with that. My gosh, it's, it's so good. Um, if you want something uh, fancy, uh, try getting a Bardstown or a barrel. Um, I mean, the Bardstown, like I've, I've already shown, I've, I've already put it away, but you know, the, the bottles are beautiful. The, the, the product itself is absolutely delicious. Uh, you, you can't go wrong with it. Um, 
Their Discovery series is really nice. Um, it, it blends so many different, um, it's, 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 it's a blend, but it's, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, I'm gonna adjust my camera a little bit there. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, so you can't go wrong with them. And then Barrel, which I was already showing, you know, Barrel's products. Uh, gosh, I, I can't go, I, I can't rave enough about Barrel Dovetail. I mean, it's, it's well under $100. Um, and it is just absolutely incredible every time I drink it. It's just like the taste of mocha. That's my flavor profile. Yeah, you know, just keep that in mind, <laughs> you know. Um, now, if you can get your hands on a 1792 store pick, um, those are usually low cost. You know, they're under 50 bucks. And they're delicious. Yummy, yum, yum, yum. Uh, I'm a huge fan of their bottled and bond. Uh, so I'd be remiss. Uh, not to bring that up, so um, in a pinch, you know, definitely like a 1792, um, and also in a pinch, Old Forester. Uh, you you can't get um, well I, before I say something controversial. Uh, the Old Forester Whiskey Row series are wonderful. They're excellent gifts. They're not expensive, and they're all delicious. So that's the 1870. Um, 1910, 1920, uh, take your pick. Uh, you can read a hundred reviews online, but any of them are good. I mean, they're all absolutely delicious. Um, and yeah, you know, like I said, pair it with a rocks glass. Um, uh, so getting back to that list, um, ignoring allocated uh, high rye, wilderness trail six year, um, something fancy, do Bardstown or Barrel. Um, if you want to really spend, you could go get like the higher end, like whistle pigs and all that other stuff. Uh, it's up to you. And if you want to spend money, spend money. Um, if you need something in a pinch, Old Forester. Uh, if you can find it, a 1792 uh, uh, single barrel pick, you know, and that could be any of their single barrels. It doesn't have to be 1792 single barrel, which actually is a thing. It could be their foolproof, it could be just standard 1792. Wonderful stuff. Um, and then if you can find something interesting that's sweet mash, yay, uh, go ahead and do it. Yeah. One last question uh, that I get asked is, they already have a lot of bourbon. What could I buy them that they don't already have? This is a problem you know, people run into, like buying me a gift. They're like, yeah, because I've got 400 something bottles at home just on the bourbon side. Um, I don't have a problem. Uh, and so people ask, what, what kind of gift could I get you? And I, I say, look, you know, give me something you like. Um, but this is where single barrel picks, uh, like store picks come in super handy. Chances are they don't have that store's pick. Um, and I know it's, uh, Simon at Story Company and, and Dennis. Um, and then of course, you know, there's, there's Dave over at Vine and Table, um, you know, all share the same opinion. You know, the the barrel picks, you know, the store picks can be a phenomenal gift. So just keep that in mind. You know, when when you're trying to find you know a very unique gift, because chances are uh, they don't have access to the the, the same uh, store picks that you do. So uh, that's all I have for this video today. I hope that this helped you. Um, I know it's hard to find a gift sometimes when it when it comes to spirits. But I hope this list helps. I will put uh, all everything I can into the, the, the description to help out. And if it helped, please uh, mention it in the comments. If you have another opinion, please also in the comments, like and subscribe. And um, I'm looking forward to finding out if your mileage varied or not. Uh, and, and good luck finding that gift and talk with you next. <laughs>